All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome here this morning. How's everybody doing today? All right, excellent. So we're entering the Christmas season, and we started last Sunday already, but uh, today is the second Advent. So uh, we had a banquet last night already that the ladies provided. That was wonderful. It was nice to get together and just start getting into the spirit of Christmas, right? Um, this morning, I'd like to read a verse with you guys. If the uh, projector person could put it on the screen. Let's read that verse together this morning as we remember why we are celebrating Christmas. Everybody read together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. This is why we celebrate Christmas, right? He, had us, he loved us so much that he sent his son, and we remember this season especially for what he did for us. He gave us his son, and we can receive him. So just uh, think that's a really great uh, verse. I mean, I think everybody in the world knows that verse. And so, excellent. Uh, let's uh, look a little bit into our bulletins, uh, see what's happening through this week. Um, first of all, uh, Monday, there will be a ministerial meeting. Uh, if I understand correctly, it'll be right here at the church. And uh, Wednesday, the youth have a practice here at the church as well. And Friday, uh, there's the junior youth Christmas party. Um, on the other side, there's a little more details. Um, junior youth, uh, you'll be meeting here at the church Friday at 5.30 p.m. for a scavenger hunt that your leaders are preparing. And then afterwards, your supper and program will be happening at David and Valerie Dick's place. And the supper will cost $7, so I believe they will have rides for you from here. So just come to the church here at 5.30 Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Um, and the back uh, was tables. Looks like they're gone. There was free books. Oh, never mind. They're gone, I guess. Uh, starting today, there is uh, a little bit of a change in the children's church schedule. Um, during the German service, there was no children's church, and it will be so for the rest of the month. Um, however, during the German service, uh, there's going to be some uh, activity uh, in the back there, like uh, papers that they can fill out and for the kids, uh, color booklets and stuff. Um, and then for the English service, which starts today, so later when we go to the English, uh, to the kids, when you're dismissed for the kids' uh, church, there's a little bit of a change of where you'll be going. The seven and ten-year-olds, seven to ten-year-olds, will be joining the five to six-year-olds at level one. So keep that in mind. And also the four-year-olds will join the three-year-olds in the Sunday school class, room number five. And I do believe your directors will be back there to assist you if you have any further questions. Um, also, and then going into the new year, January and February, there is a need of more teachers. Um, teaching the German class or in English four to six year olds. So um, either sign up there or talk to your leaders, there's, uh, to the directors, there's the names there. So yeah, that's for the kids' church. And uh, youth announcements, as uh, was no, uh, mentioned already, your practice will be happening here on uh, Wednesday, and your banquet is next week, December 17th. And there's no youth activity planned for today at the park, as normally would be. And then another opportunity to serve is uh, Children's um, um, Home. Liberty Children's Home is looking for families to host some children over the Christmas holidays, December 17th to January 2nd. If anyone is uh, willing to uh, host a few kids during those holidays, bless them with a family for Christmas. Um, contact the numbers that are there, Agatha from the Liberty Home or Tina Cron here from Blue Creek. Uh, the ages are 5 to 16 year olds, girls or boys, so go ahead and give them a call and see if you can um, bless them in that way. And then also a congratulations to Franz Dick and Agnetha Entz, intending to be getting get married uh, December 10th. If there's any legal or ethical reason why the two should not be married, contact Pastor Henry as he intends to marry them this Saturday. So congratulations. I don't know if you're here, but congratulations. That is all the announcements I have for today. 
unless I missed anything of importance. If not, uh, let's bow for a word of prayer and then we'll get into the singing part of the day. Father God, I thank you for this beautiful morning and thank you for everyone that's here and I thank you for everyone that is tuned in and, and uh, ready to worship you this morning in this way. Father, I pray that as we give praise to you today that you'll be glorified and honored and that you will um, bless us. Um, bless us with joy, bless us with peace as we worship and think about the season we're in, the Christmas season we're heading into, and that we're worshiping you and only you. And so, Lord, I pray that you will grant us peace and joy this morning as we praise and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team. Good morning. Let's sing, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Thank you, worship team. I could call up uh, Eva Clausen for the Advent reading, please. I'm going to read um, Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of peace you give us through Jesus. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming by working, us, by working for Christ's peace to take root in our family. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus our Lord. Thank you very much. Um, the ushers could get ready for the offering and the uh, kids are dismissed for Children's Church right now.
Let's uh, bow for a word of prayer before we take the offering. Father God, I thank you again for this morning. Thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for the week of protection we've had. Or, and I just pray that this morning as we give back to you, I pray that our offering will be acceptable for you, Lord. I pray that you will guide um, the hands that, that uh, handle it, and I pray that you will bless the givers for the gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for your gifts. May the Lord bless you. Pastor Henry, for the message. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It is good to be here this morning. It is good to to realize that Christmas is coming closer and closer, right? As children, we were all, I was always very excited about Christmas, and I now see that in my children, they can hardly wait till Christmas morning. And it's only four more uh, Sundays. The fourth Sunday from today, it's Christmas morning. So who's all excited about that? Ah, even some of the adults. I am too. I am excited about Christmas. So that is awesome. So last night, we had a, a really good uh, uh, ladies' banquet uh, the ladies treated us men to a good meal and, uh, and a good program. I uh, truly enjoyed it. And uh, I believe most of you were here, maybe all of you. So it was a good time. It was a good time fellowshipping, and it was a, a good reminder of uh, why we celebrate Jesus. It's, uh, or why we celebrate Christmas. It's all about Jesus. Uh, so this morning I want to continue in our Advent series. A series last uh, week we talked about uh, uh, hope. And uh, this week we want to look at uh, uh, peace. Uh, last week we uh, discovered a man named Simeon and we uh, uh, talked about him and we learned that he was uh, faithfully waiting for the arrival of the promised uh, Savior. And we learned that uh, our waiting is not an idle laziness, but rather it is an active preparation for the, uh, for the coming fulfillment uh, of uh, Jesus Christ, that he will come back. 
Uh, we, we don't question whether he will come back or not because we look behind us and we see that he came as a baby and, we, uh, and that gives us hope that he will come in the future, that he will come back to receive his church unto himself, right? God promised in Isaiah that a day was coming when the Messiah, uh, when the Messiah would arrive and he would usher in a new government of peace. There is going to be peace on earth and peace uh, peace on earth doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, the way I understand it doesn't mean that everything, everyone will be at, at totally at peace. But there's, there will be peace on earth uh, in God's uh, people. The people that, uh, that know the Lord Jesus Christ, there's peace with us then. So the, uh, much of the Old Testament is a story about uh, God's people who were enslaved by uh, powerful am uh, empires. The Old Testament writers very often cried out to God for peace. In the Old Testament, the, the people of, uh, of God, they, they were longing for a, a time to come where there would be peace. They were longing for, uh, for a time to be, for the king to be born. But they were looking for a, an earthly king. They were looking for an earthly king. Like last Sunday, I talked about many people missed the, the Messiah. They missed it that he was here. They missed that Jesus Christ came as a child. They missed that completely because they were looking for an earthly king. They were looking for something that Jesus wasn't. So, and I, uh, I was challenging all of us to not miss that we have the promised uh, Holy Spirit with us already. And uh, so, but today we want to look in, into Isaiah uh, a little bit again and uh, also in, uh, into Matthew and uh, thank you for reading those verses here already. It uh, almost looked to me like uh, Colleen had uh, memorized uh, her verses. It didn't look like she was reading them a whole lot. So good job, Colleen. So it was good for, to read them here. So let's read from uh, Isaiah uh, 9. But uh, actually, before we do that, let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And God, I thank you for, for your peace be with us. I thank you that your spirit is with us, and I thank you that uh, some 2,000 years ago, uh, you, the Father, sent your only son into this world as a baby. And we, as we celebrate that today, uh, this uh, coming month, uh, this month here now, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that that living hope and that uh, living peace will be with us. And Lord, I thank you for each and every one that has come out this morning, and I pray that your spirit will lead and guide. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. I will read them again. It says, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the greatness of his government and peace will, will have, will, and let me start that again. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and, right and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The promise of God is that there is going to come a king. The, uh, the uh, children of Israel, like I said before already, they, they were in captivity. They were uh, uh, conquered by the, uh, powerful empires, and they weren't living as children of God. So they, uh, they very often held to these promises. And this is a, uh, a prophetic promise that Isaiah has here. And he says there's a coming a king. There's going to be a new government uh, coming. And this wasn't reality at the time of its writing. When, when this was written, it wasn't reality then. But they had, uh, they had peace. Peace was with them because they knew that this is going to come. They knew that they had seen enough evidence that God keeps his promises. When God promises something, it will come to pass. So the, this is a, one of the, the scriptures that they hung on to. Uh, knowing that uh, this will come to pass. And then 100 years later, some hundreds of years later, this did happen. So many of the people, when this was written, probably didn't live anymore. They probably never seen this fulfilled. But last Sunday, we were reminded that Isaiah, uh, sorry, Simeon was one of the men that did see that promise. He did see the promise that this did happen. So I want to read right away out of Luke chapter 2. I will read from verse 8 through 12, and then uh, we will talk about this some further. 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of, of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He will be a, uh, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Now outside of Bethlehem, there were some shepherds on the field. And what do, what do we think of when we think of shepherds? I don't know what goes through your mind, but when, uh, very often when I think of shepherds, I think of Christmas plays. I, th I, I think of the skits that the uh, school children have for us. I think of these uh, young boys and girls. They have a, st uh, a stick in their hand, and they're, they have uh, some, um, a sheet wrapped around them, and they're angels. So they're, sorry, they're shepherds. And this is cute. They're very often they have a blanket, and this is, these are cute little uh, shepherds, right? That's what we think of very often, or at least I do. But if we go back to what reality was some 2,000 years ago, it was far from that. The shepherds there, they were very often a lower class of people. They were very often out in the fields days at a time, maybe weeks, maybe months, I don't know. But they, went, they, they traveled from place to place looking for grass to feed their sheep. And they were sometimes not the best smelling men, I imagine, because they were out in the fields where they probably couldn't shower when they needed to. So they were a lower class of people. But here, the king is born, and I want to, this is my first point here. Uh, the peace of Christ is for everyone. So the king is born, and who gets the first news of that? It's the shepherds. The people, the lower class people, they get the first news. They get, they get to hear it the first that the king is born. And I found this so interesting. Why wouldn't uh, the angel have gone to the kings and said that, hey, the, sh the, the king has been born, or to the church leaders, hey, the king has been born. They could broadcast that in their churches. They could broadcast that uh, over their, however they did uh, news broadcasting. They could have broadcast it that way. Hey, the king has been born. But no, he came to the shepherds, to the low, uh, uh, low lives people, we would very often uh, say. He came to those people. And what happened? As soon as they heard this news, as soon as uh, the, the angel came, the shepherds, they were terrified. Well, why were they so scared? Why were they terrified? Now, let's just picture this for a minute, that you're out on the field at night, and the sheep are all bedded down, and you're maybe sitting around a fire there. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, there's just this bright light around you, uh, brighter than you've ever uh, imagined, brighter than you've ever seen. The glory of the Lord is there with them, is all around them, and they're terrified, they're scared. Now, I think you and I would be scared as well if we're uh, uh, out in the dark, there's a, uh, on the field somewhere and probably half uh, asleep. And all of a sudden, the, the glory of the Lord is there, is right there with these shepherds. And the first thing that the, sh uh, that the, angels, uh, that the angel says to the shepherds, is says, don't be afraid. The first thing that he says, don't be afraid. Now, what's the opposite of being scared? Peace, right? So he says, peace, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. Now, I believe that this is, uh, we can take this for us today. He said it to the, uh, to the shepherds there, don't be afraid, but I believe he says that to us now, uh, today as well. Don't be afraid. Now, if we take this uh, to a more personal level, maybe over the last time you've gotten some uh, not-so-good news from the doctor, and the Spirit says, don't be afraid. Or maybe you're in a relationship that's about to fall apart, and the Spirit says, don't be afraid. Or maybe you're just... Not sure where everything is going with this, where this world is, with the chaos all around us and everything, the, the way it's happening. And the Spirit says, don't be afraid. You do not need to be afraid. Later on, I will get into that a little more as why we do not need to be afraid. But he's telling us, we do not need to, he's telling the shepherds, don't be afraid. For I have some awesome news to, uh, for you. And maybe you haven't heard some good news in a while. Maybe you, you feel like you, uh, all the news that you get lately, they're just not so good. 
Well, I want to bring you good news today as well. And the good news is we look back and we see that Jesus was, uh, was born. What we read about, it actually did happen. It's not just a story. It did happen. And then we read in John chapter 14 that uh, Jesus later on says, I will uh, go and, I, and the Father will send you the, the, the Spirit. He has promised you the Spirit, and that did happen too. We have the Spirit with us. So the good news is that Jesus came and he died for us. The verse that Albert read, that we read together with Albert before, the one and only Son came so that our sins can be forgiven, so that we can have eternal life with Jesus Christ. So now at the Advent, we're looking forward to when Jesus will come back and receive us to, unto himself so that we can be with him. But we're also reminded of what happened behind us, what happened some 2,000 years ago. So the good news is that Jesus did come and that he did bring peace into this world. If you do not have peace, if you do not, have, uh, if you do not feel that, uh, that you've had an, uh, any good news in a long time, well, let this be good news to you. It did happen. The Holy Spirit is with us. The second point I want to make is peace is not, peace is not the uh, absence of a conflict. It is the presence of God. So we can have peace even though there's conflict around us. And I want to uh, just share a, uh, a story of a painting. Uh, I don't remember this very good. I believe that... Uh, you probably have all heard this before, but it's about a painting and, and uh, uh, that there is out there somewhere. It's a, there's a waterfall and there, there's a the big uh, cliff there or uh, rocks there, and there's a big waterfall that, that, that goes over these rocks there. And there, in the distance, there's the, the dark clouds and there's lightning, and you can see on the trees there, there's wind. But there's halfway up this uh, the cliff there, there's a, a skinny little tree there growing out of the rocks there, and one of the branches kind of goes in behind there, that's in the shelter there, and there's a nest there, and a bird is sitting in that nest with its eyes closed. It's sitting there totally at peace, and there's chaos all around him. There's a big waterfall, and there's lightning, there's wind, and there's, this bird is sitting there with its eyes closed, totally at peace. And as I, I was reminded of this uh, story, of this painting, it took me back to some 20 years back, maybe 20, 18 years back somewhat. I was uh, driving truck at that time, and uh, my alternator failed. And this was in the dead of winter, and uh, it was uh, going towards evening, so I knew that I would need my headlights. And I was uh, still a few hours away from home, so I decided to, uh, to park early, and to shut off the truck because my batteries were, st were still full and I was going to sleep the night through there and then go home in the morning because uh, uh, that way I uh, knew that I, could, uh, I would make it home. But this, it was cold. It was in the winter time. So how am I going to stay alive in this truck? So I had a, a sleeping bag that was supposed to be good for minus 20 weather. So I decided that I'm going to crawl into that sleeping bag. I kept my clothes on. I shut off the truck. I uh, cr uh, 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 crawled into the sleeping bag. And I put the pillow over my head, and I prayed. I said, Lord, keep me warm. Keep me, uh, keep me alive till morning so that I can go home. And you know, after a little bit, it was totally calm. There isn't many times in my life where I have experienced such peaceful moments. The truck wasn't running. There was no traffic outside. I had parked uh, the kind of off in the back there. I wanted it to be quiet because if the truck wasn't running, I didn't want to hear the other traffic. And it was totally, totally peaceful. And I knew that it was cold outside. I don't remember how cold it was. I knew that, uh, that if I didn't have the sleeping bag, I could freeze to death there in the truck. I knew that. But I had prayed to God, and the peace of God came over me, and I was totally at peace knowing that God will protect me there. And in the morning, I woke up, and I was nice and warm in the sleeping bag. I got out of it, and it was cold. I fired up the truck, and I drove home. So even though around me it wasn't so peaceful because of the cold and the winter, inside the cab there in that sleeping bag, it was totally peaceful. And that was an, uh, an experience that I had where, where I just felt that God was with me there. The Spirit was with me. Now, the sleeping bag may have kept me alive even if I hadn't prayed. It was supposed to be good for minus 20. 
I had a jacket and some clothes on. So I probably would have stayed alive, but I probably wouldn't have had that peace had I not reached out to God. You see, true peace can be experienced even in the midst of chaos. True peace can be experienced even when there is a pandemic going on. True peace can be experienced even when, the, when the stuff, when, when we get bad news from the doctor, when, we, when it seems like our marriage doesn't want to go well, when all these things happen around us, true peace can still happen. Because our king came some 2,000 years back to bring peace. He was going to usher peace into uh, this world, and that did happen. I don't know if any of you has ever experienced that, but I have multiple times I have experienced that true peace. That's just, I can't explain that, how that feels. If you haven't experienced that yourself, then I pray that you will come to experience that. And what happened as soon as, uh, as he said that the king has been born, what happened right after that? Let's see. Let's read this from uh, verse 13 and 14 further. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared, uh, appeared with the angel, praising God and, and saying, Glory to, God in the heaven, in the hev Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Do you feel that God's favor is on you? How do we get, get God's favor? How can we get God's favor on us so that we can have peace with him? As I read this, this last part really stuck out to me. Peace to those on whom God's, on whom God's favor is, uh, is resting on. And see, the only way that we can have that peace is if we have peace here. If we have the peace of God, we can have uh, the peace of God. Okay, how am I? I'm not saying this right. If the peace of God is with us, then we will experience that peace. And very often what is standing in the way of that is sin in our lives. If there's sin in our lives, then we do not experience the peace of God. The book of Romans tells us that the rule that, uh, that, the rule that governs over us most is the rule of sin. I want to read from uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. It says, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Now, if you're not experiencing the peace of God, are you living in the flesh? Because what it says here that if we live in the flesh, we are enemies with God. If we live in the flesh, we do not like God. We think that our own way is better than God's way. We do not want to come under the submission of Jesus Christ our Lord. We figure that our own way is better. And if we want to experience this peace, then we have to come before the, Al the Almighty God and repent of our sin, bring that to the cross and turn, for, and turn away from our sin. And we have to live in the Spirit. We have to live in the Spirit. And this is something that, uh, to me, for many, many years, did not make sense. When people talked about, and when I read this myself, living in the flesh or in the Spirit, what does that mean? How do I live in the Spirit? How do I not live in the flesh? Does that mean now I'm going to, the, all my thoughts are always going to be holy, everything is always going to be heavenly? I will let you answer that question to yourself. I'll let you ponder on that. But I've come to experience that uh, the more I live in the Spirit, the more I do things out of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more peace I have. When I want to do them out of the flesh, that means my own way, I think my own way is better than, than God's way, and I don't have peace. So if there's anyone here today that does not have the peace of God, that, does not, that is not totally at peace, then I want to challenge you 
to come before the Lord and ask Him, God, what is in my heart? What is be standing between uh, you and me? What is there that I do not experience this peace? Because I'm pretty sure all of you long for that or else you wouldn't have come here. Or maybe some of you, your mom and dad said you have to go to church. And if that is you, then I pray that the Spirit will do a work in your life in spite of that. See, very often I, I realize in people's lives when they do not, do not have peace, when you're with people and they don't, they constantly want to do something. They never, they don't want to sit and, and uh, just be calm and be relaxed. Then you know that there's something going on in their life. Now either they're just super energetic, maybe they had too much coffee that morning. Or there's sin going on in their life. And they know that uh, if, they, uh, if they stand still, if they just uh, take the time and be uh, be quiet, they know that it's going to bother them. So they keep themselves busy with work. They have to constantly be working, constantly be doing something in order not to, to uh, allow that conviction to, take, uh, to get the better of themselves. And I know this from myself. I used to, when I, when I was living in sin, I felt that people were always looking down on me. I felt condemned. I felt like people were always just, uh, I was a no one. And later on, I realized that people didn't think that of me. Many of the people that I felt that were thinking that of me actually prayed for me. And see, Jesus came born in a manger where there's cows and sheep and donkeys and whatnot. He came, he was born there. When he's the king, he could have been born in the palace, but he chose to be born in a, in a manger. And why is that? He came completely humble. He came completely humble and he said, and he knew that there was going to be people on this earth that, that would feel like, well, I'm just not good enough. I, uh, I'm just the, the, lowest, the lowest class of people. That's me. And he says, I will come born, being born as a king in a very low, humble way. And I will bring the first, the first people that are going to hear about it are the, uh, the people that's uh, the second class people. They're the first ones that are going to hear about it, that the king is born. So if you're here today and you think that, that you are just not good enough, it's not true. You are good enough. Because Jesus came for people just like you, like all of us. He came for people just like us so that we can be good enough. And the only way that we are good enough is by receiving His forgiveness in our life, by repenting and turning away from sin. And by asking Him constantly, Lord, teach me Your ways. I have done this for years. When I would go to work in the morning, I would say on, on my way to work, I would pray, Lord, teach me Your ways. You have two hands, two legs, two eyes, two ears, and a mouth. Use it. How do you want to use me? Teach me how to live in the Spirit. Teach me how to walk in the Spirit because I did not know the difference between flesh and, and Spirit. I didn't know how to live different. And it's been my prayer for many years. I prayed, Lord, I want to live for you in the Spirit. And with that prayer, I would very often pray, Lord, humble me. I want to be humble before you and before men. So I want to encourage you, if there's anyone here that does not have that inner peace, that does not know what I'm talking about, go before the Lord by yourself or with a friend and say, Lord, what is, between, what is standing in my way for me not to experience that peace? And He'll show you the Holy Spirit will show you. He has a, a unique way of doing that. When there's sin in your life, He has a unique way of, of, of just pointing that out. Not in a condemning way, but just in a gentle way, He will point that out. And then you have a, an opportunity to do something with it or just to ignore it. But if you then take that sin and you bring that to the cross and say, Lord, I am so sorry for this. Will you please forgive me for this? Will your precious blood just wash this away? And will you give me that peace 
that Pastor Henry was talking about. He will. You know how I know? It happened in my life. And, it ha and I know of a lot of people where it happened in their lives. So and when God promises something, it will, it, will be, it will happen. He will never say something and then not do that. So it will happen. Let's bow for a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that your peace will be with us today. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today that does not have that peace, that does not know what I'm talking about, Lord, I pray that, they will, that you will, through your Holy Spirit, just ever so gently just remind them and nudge them where they need to uh, get some sin out of their way so that they can be connected to you, Lord. And Father, I pray that your blessing will be with us. Lord, I pray that as we go into the Christmas season, Lord, I pray that we will stop and remind ourselves that you came to bring hope, peace, joy, and love, and that we will live out of that, and that when we get together with people, that we will be full of, of, uh, of joy and full of peace, and that we will be excited about what you did some 2,000 years ago, and that we will be excited that we have the Holy Spirit with us, and that we can live in the Spirit now already, and that we will be excited about uh, the promise that Jesus will come back and he will uh, take us to where uh, you are right now, Father. So, Father, I pray that your presence, that your spirit will, will be with all of us, that you will walk with us, that you will protect us, and that you will guide us. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for coming. May the peace of God be with us. We are dismissed.